In this video, I'm going to take the soda can that was modeled in a previous video and I'm going to step through unwrapping this so that it fits nicely on one UV square. So first thing I'm going to do, just like any time I unwrap, is I'm going to make sure my history and transform have been deleted and frozen so that I don't have any ugliness in there um, for my unwrapping. It can sometimes affect it, so it's always a good habit to get into is to make sure that is done before you even begin. So I'm going to open up the UV editor just to take a look at what we got. And a lot of times when you start working with 3D shapes, um, those primitives, if it's pretty close to the original, you might have a really good starting point. Like we have uh, this can, um, it wouldn't actually be too bad to, to, to start by, you know, grabbing faces, like we could easily, you know, isolate these different areas um, and start, you know, just kind of tweak this a little bit. Um, so I'm going to first approach this from that direction and then I'm going to talk about what do you do if that's not a viable option. Like how would we unwrap this if we if we didn't have a decent starting point? So um, luckily for us, this kind of actually divided it up into the three areas I would potentially put this with the sides, the top, and the bottom, right? So, I'm going to kind of leave those as is and just kind of push them to the side. I'm just going to kind of start cleaning these up on a uh, piece by piece basis. So the first easy one to do is going to be these tops and bottoms. Um, we do have some stretching going on on the sides. And there's two approaches that we have to think about with how we would unwrap this. Is it important to keep a consistent material between the top and this ridge right here? Like, does this need to be seamless? Or can there be a seam here, um, you know, a, a possibly visible differentiation between those two? Let's, let's approach these that they need to be seamless and then um, will I redo it again in another way? We'll approach it as if it's okay if there is a seam, there's some approaches to do for that. All right, so if we want this to be seamless, the easiest way for me to do that is to come over here and I'm gonna use underneath unfold, this unfold and optimize. And what this will do is it'll kind of take the polygons I have selected and try to flatten them out into a single UV shell as best as possible. It's keeping it as a single UV shell because it is still, it is a UV shell to begin with. Um, it won't split it or try to make multiple UV shells out of it. If you do have multiple UV shells selected, it would keep them as separate UV shells. It would not try to merge them together. So I'm gonna click unfold and I'm going to click optimize and optimize isn't doing too much because this is kind of a pretty uniform shape but sometimes you might need to click optimize a few times to do that and we can see over here that it did a pretty good job um, you might need to scale it up to to see the checkerboard pattern a little bit better but there is a little bit of stretching but it's honestly pretty minimal. So if we did need to kind of keep this as one uniform piece, the stretching is tolerable. It's not too bad. Um, it, could, it could be a lot worse. So we're gonna keep this like this and I can undo that scale. And then I'm gonna just kind of move this over here and let's also do the same thing for the bottom. So I'm gonna select that bottom and same kind of issues, there's stretching going on. And if it's a little bit hard to see because it's so small, if I scale this up, you can see the crazy weird stretching going on. So let's do that same process. I'm gonna have it selected. I'm gonna click unfold and I'm gonna optimize it. But again, it doesn't look like it needs it, but that's okay. It's always good to check. 
and then we have that done. Top and bottom are done. Let's work on the can itself. So I'm going to select it and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to unfold and I'm going to optimize it. So let's unfold, optimize. And it's not too bad. Um, this part can get a little bit strange because of that lip, but ultimately it's not, it's not going to be the end of the world. All right. We have it unwrapped, but we got to start making some decisions. Um, let's set the, con the textile density so that it's a consistent size. Oof, that got really small. Let's move these over. I'm going to scale these up just so I can, we can talk about this. So as is, and I'm, we're just kind of eyeballing these for now and to make a, de a decision. This isn't too bad. Yes, we do have some wasted space. Um, is it too much wasted space? Maybe, maybe not. One of the things that we could do is that we could split this into two UV shells and we can see if it would fit a little bit better. So I'm going to first straighten this out and I'm going to just lay this out real quick. Um, that should be good. And this is the size that we get. So let's let's I'm gonna I'm gonna save this real fast, and let's see if splitting this up would be a good idea. Um, we'd want to split it in half. So if you can't figure quite figure out where half is, we could always um, use our grid to help that. So let's see. Should be one past. And. That's right. Yep, that's half. I hit Control Shift X to detach that, and then I can repack this. And it didn't do anything. It doesn't really think we we can fit it any better. So this is one of those cases where we probably don't really want to split this up very much. Um, we could try one more time. We could always cut these into quarters. And then, let's see. The nice thing though is one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three. If we do so split these into quarters, um, we can kind of fix a little bit of the stretching. One, two, three, four, five, six. I'm gonna then go ahead and optimize those so they'll be a little bit less stretched. And let's pack these. And it, we're not really getting much, much benefit over splitting these. It's just that kind of a shape it is. I don't really feel that we're going to save anything. So I'm going to just undo those. And it's one of those cases where this is honestly the most efficient way we could pack this. So we would leave this as is. All right, so that was pretty quick, but what if you did not have UVs to start with? This is, this is what you got. Um, we will need to start fresh. And you might, let me close this. And reopen this. Uh, you might think about, you know, selecting it and then doing that automatic unwrap. Let's do UV automatic. That seems to be a favorite for students is that automatic one. But if we take a look at it, look how messy it makes it. It like splits it up down here. We get these rings. We get all of this stuff. It is not a beautiful piece. So it might be a good place to start, but we are going to have to clean it up um, a lot. 
and that's fine. It's going to be a lot of stitching and possibly planar mapping things. The method I would prefer to use for something like this is actually going to be this. So I'm going to I'm going to walk you through it. Rather than a planar, I'm sorry. Rather than automatic, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a planar map. I'm going to do it on an axis, an axis that kind of gets it the best. Maybe something like this. Like I wouldn't want to do it from the top. And the reason I'm doing this is just to make it a single together. Um, and then I can, you know, I got rid of all this, the UV seams. It's a single UV shell. And now I can go in and define where I want my UV shells to be, my UV seams. So I'm gonna move this away. And I'm gonna look at my model and I'm going to figure out where those should be. And this is going to be based off of where would it be okay for me to have possibly a visible seam. So the first one I'm going to put in is going to be, because I mentioned I was going to do this, around. So I'm going to make sure I have my, let me turn off that checkerboard. I'm going to make sure I have my selection tool. I'm just going to double click. I'm then going to come over here into my UVs. I'm going to do a cut, sew, cut. I do this method so much that I do have a shortcut key here. Oop, cut. There's cut and there's sew. You can also right click and do a cut right there. So once I have that separated, I can then select by UV shell. And we have this piece. So this is the one unfortunate piece. Um, since it is super flat like this, we the UVs are going to have, like we can't do a lot of tools to these. So this is just kind of in general. Like if you end up something like this, let me save it, and you're like, okay, I'm gonna, opt, I'm gonna unfold this. It's probably going to disappear. Um, sometimes if you do to, if you do, um, certain things to it, um, it might also throw an error because it will say something about um, like zero faces or something infinitely flat or something to that effect in your errors. So if we have something like this, we need to just planar, replanar map just that one area. So I'm going to make sure that the whole thing is selected. I'm going to go to UV and do a planar. Um, but I do want to be, you know, we did the original one with the Z axis. Since this is, you know, top down, I want to switch it to the Y axis and hit apply. And we can see that I have the, you know, the top nice and, nice and visible now. I will then do a quick unfold optimize. It probably for something this circular not actually do anything but it's just kind of a good habit to get into. So then let's do the bottom piece. I'm going to rotate to the bottom. I'm going to double click on that edge. All the way around. I'm going to do a cut. I'm going to move this one away to make this a little bit easier. So even something like this, we can try to do an unfold. Let's see what happens. And that was enough that we were able to then just do an unfold on it. Like enough was kind of pulled apart that it didn't get all crazy on me. So luckily we didn't have to do a plane on that one. So let's go move that over there. I'm not concerned at this point that these are different sizes. I know that this is a big texel density difference, but we are gonna deal with that at the end. Who else needs a cut on them? Let's cut along here. We'll do it along this top right here. I guess that's the bottom, right? Let's do a cut. And I'm going to take some time just to finish cutting this up before I, I fully fix this. So I'm going to keep that like that. Let's rotate back around. 
this one, let's cut it. Mm, where do I want to cut you? Maybe here. And then just cut that. I'm going to cut the next one here. And that should be it for my UV islands. I'm not done cutting, but I at least split them into the different UV islands. So we have that bottom ring, we have this big middle one, and then we have the two at the top, like that. So let's deal with this can first. Um, we obviously can't unfold this yet because it is, you know, all the way around. It needs an extra cut somewhere to do that. And I'm going to do that by um, usually I try to line it up with the grid just to make my life easier. I could also do it here. So, you know, this one does correlate to that one. If I double click in the UV space, it will do the same thing as if I double clicked here, but it won't go through the whole model. It'll just go through that UV island. So I double click this. We see we got that one edge. I can then cut it. And now I should be able to unfold and optimize. That should be good. I'm going to pull it aside. I'll work on this bottom one now. This one also needs a cut. It'd be nice to put it kind of in the same spot. So I might come in and be a little bit more surgical with this so I know exactly where that is. Let's cut it and let's see what happens if we unfold it. It did get a little ugly and that's okay. We could talk about that in a minute. Let's do these. Oops, sometimes it's hard to those little ones. All right, we're going to cut it. Let's unfold that. And let's do that last one. Oh, sorry, there it is right there. So let's cut. And notice this last one came out really nice and clean. The reason is because it is just a single row and it is very uniform. These ones came out really curvy because it has extra stuff in it. It's doing its best to try to, you know, keep it as, as uniform as possible. Um, and this starts to come into, you know, what, you know, while we do want to keep things, um, we want to keep we want to keep things as non-stretched as possible, but sometimes you might need to fix things. Um, like this wouldn't be very optimal if, if you had to put like a wood grain on it. Like you, it is a Coke can, but what if you had to do wood grain? That would be really hard to do. So we would want to fix that. We'd want to make it straight, like this one. Let me orient this one while I'm at it. So how do we do this? How do we approach this? This might be something that you might want to watch a few times so that you can kind of get the steps because it is kind of weird, but it does make a really cool result because you're going to run into this a lot where this curved surface is curved. I need to fix this. How do I do this? Okay. I'm going to select the curve. This one, we'll start with this one. I'm then going to, you know, only these, these faces are selected. I'm going to go then up to modify, and then I'm going to choose unitize. 
what this does is it breaks every little um, face into a uniform, where is it down here? A uniform square. And what we need to do now is we do need to stitch them together. Um, just bear with me, I know this seems really weird. Just watch it, watch the end results. We need to stitch them together and make sure that we tell it where the seam is. So I'm going to get my edge select and I'm going to make sure I select all the seams I want to be done back together. And this, this is where it might be a little bit kind of weird. Um, I'm going to do that by selecting them actually over here. I do need to stitch those all back. Um, and then these over here. Those, these ones as well. I don't want to get any of the edges though. I don't want to accidentally get this one that's attached to like the bottom of here. Like I don't want to accidentally grab these. So let me grab these. I do want to make sure I um, deselect where the seam is. So that's right here. This is where the seam is going to be. So I'm going to um, hold control and very carefully unclick these. Okay. Next, we are going to then use the stitch together. This one right here on all of those things that we just blew apart. So stitch together. And it's going to give us this nice uniform version of this. So, so we can see it, we tore, tore all that weird curved stuff apart, made them all uniform cubes. We then selected which edges need to get stitched back together, which is everything except for, you know, the sides and where we want that seam. Last, we do need to kind of uh, make this a little bit closer to the original. You can see that it has a lot of stretching going on. It's not even close. So what we can do is we've used the um, Unfold Optimize. If we, uh, let's see, if I find it correctly. I think that's not quite the right space. Oh, here it is. Um, unfold along. So we can tell it to unfold along just the U or the V. Um, so that, you know, rather than unfold on both the U and the V, we can unfold just the U and just the V. So if we do the U, um, we can see that it squishes it, but it kind of keeps it pretty uniform because we're only going in one direction. If we were to do the V, just to, just to show you, it doesn't really do much because we made that, you know, you know, pretty, pretty nice. So we do need to do it along the U and we get this nice uniform strip of our UVs. Like I said, it's kind of weird, but once you do it a few times, like this is, trust me, this is a very handy thing to do. So I'm going to do it again on this one. So first, select the faces of the weird ring or curve that you want to straighten out. I'm then going to go to modify and I'm going to choose unitize so that it just breaks them all apart and makes them uniform squares. Next, I need to select the edges I want to stitch together and it's not going to be all of them. I can't just, you know, do this. This is going to cause problems. Um, a quicker way to do it though could be to select first all of them. And if I know where it's kind of connected in other ways, I can always deselect them here. But I do still need to make sure that I know where that seam is. So I need to, I'm going to find my old seam, which is right here and then manually come in, hold control and deselect where the seam is. This one's a little bit difficult with underneath. There we go. Next, 
I'm going to choose stitch together and I'm going to zoom out to find where it flew off to. There it is, over there. I'm then going to um, scale it along either the unfold, unfold, either along the U or the V. In this instance, I'm going to do it along the V. And we got it proportionately scaled now. And it's perfectly straight. Isn't that beautiful? This is this is a nice looking set of straight UVs that will make it a lot easier to do in Substance Painter. All right, let's start trying to get it put into our square. So first thing, I'm going to select all these. I'm then going to set, so it's uniform. Oh, that was a little bit too small. I guess it's fine. Um, I can at least get a little bit closer I'm then going to go to layout. Um, I'm going to turn rotate shells on this time, but let's keep it at 90 degrees. And let's just see what we get. I'm going to hit apply. And this is what we have. It might, I'm going to also attempt to split this in half, see if I can get a little bit more out of this. So we're not going to get, you know, we would have to do a lot of splitting, but just for the sake of let's just try it out because that is a lot of space and it really bothers me. I'm going to split this. I think this will work better. Let's try to lay this out. Mm. Let's try to split these ones. I really feel like this is way too much wasted space. So let me split these. Shelf shift X. Close enough. Let's lay them out. It's getting there. I think I would, I think rather than that, I think I'm going to attempt to um, lay these out myself better. Um, these probably don't need to be rotated like this. I think I could probably get more space if I leave them up here. So let's do this. I'm going to move these here. The goal of what I'm trying to do is I am trying to um, put everything as close to this bottom left corner as possible. So I got this here, I got this here, and I can move these here. Then what I can do is I can select everything and get my scale tool. And I'm going to, ch underneath transform, I can change where that pivot position is. So by default, it's usually in, um, you know, the center of your selection, but I can tell it to go in the UV area in the bottom corner. So if I start to scale this, it's going to scale this uniformly from there. So I can try to fit it a little bit better. And there we go. And yeah, that's not too bad. That's that's a little bit more. Um, we could get it to fit a little bit better. Let's give these a little bit of room to breathe. And this makes me feel a little bit better about how much space this is taking. We're using a lot more UV space. So we're keeping the texel density consistent. We're using as much UV space as possible, and we have breathing room around all of our UV islands. So two different ways to unwrap. I hope you tried out both. Um, honestly, you know, this turned out really well. We did end up being able to take up more space because we did split those off. So that kind of makes me happier that I went this way. But hopefully this was helpful with learning how to unwrap.